questo tempo e eh, ci sente eh, si eh, supporti grafica e illustrazione da fin dall'inizio degli anni 90 realizzando realizzando praticamente le eh, sigle sì, di edizione si chiama di eh, le copertine okay. eh, le copertine le eh, centrini e i poster per tantissime etichette eh, storiche di Detroit da Transmart, Planetia, The Resistance, anche, ne parlavamo prima anche per le etichette esterne come la Buzz, che è un'etichetta di The Belgio in cui realizzava una bellissima tra l'altro la copertina del disco di Daniel Archie nell'inizio degli anni 90. Nel corso degli anni poi ha sviluppato tutta quanta una, 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 una narrativa personale eh, legata al mondo che rappresentava e che poi nel corso degli anni si è inserita nel filone molto afrofuturista, o perlomeno non necessariamente la fine del mondo, di fatto poi è stato contestualizzato in questo modo e eh, ha iniziato a produrre anche fumetti. Mm, eh, aveva una sua casa di produzione in cui ha realizzato 4 o 5 fumetti e poi dopo di che è venuto fuori questo progetto. And then 
inspired me also, so I was able to uh, uh, take that inspiration and start working on the novel and doing the crowdfunding and then, um, uh, you know, working on the graphic novel and being able to finish it. And then, what about the crowdfunding? Uh, what is the idea of the idea? Well, I was asked by James Brothers, his name is Ty Green, and he asked me to try to think about his family, and particularly his mother, who had been uh, going through some struggles. So, um, you know, after hearing from him and being talked to his extensive, we decided to do crowdfunding to fund the graphic novel and also help out the extensive family. And uh, the, the crowdfunding there was on Indiegogo? Yes. And uh, was incredibly successful. Yes. And I know that you told me that uh, the, the family was very elf, uh, this, this project helped uh, them a lot. Yes. So it was very important. So what is the, what was the next step? So the, the, in terms of production, because you contacted uh, Trezor or Trezor contacted you? I had first approached the Zor before the crowdfunding and everything. Uh, after the Afro Futurism concert at the uh, conference, I actually met with you for uh, and showed them the different concepts and uh, told them I wanted to do a graphic album. You know, they liked the concepts, but they really didn't support it at the time. But it was only after the crowdfunding that uh, I finally heard from them that they uh, wanted to support it. So they understood that there was uh, a lot of interest about the people, the love yeah. for, for Uh, showing different age 
pages, uh, different stories, and also a modern day story. So to show the, it, it spans hundreds of years, and to show a slow development of how they eventually became the empire, uh, or at least uh, five stories in the graphic novel. E fra le altre persone adesso vi chiederò questa cosa, c'è cioè appunto nella, nella sceneggiatura degli script e nei dialoghi c'è cioè lui e insieme a Dai Sato che appunto ha lavorato con Caroline Sopra, poi Vivo, Sopra, The Shell, Standard of Context, insomma è molto introdotto all'interno diciamo, del sistema degli anime. Poi cioè, c'è un traduttore e gli original layout sono ovviamente i suoi e poi ci sono altri artisti che appunto mi chiederò di vedere in questo momento. So I just explain to the people the main you know people the main connection with uh, with Dai Sato and uh, but I want to know from you which are the other guy guys because you have more people that you work with for this project. Yeah I have a whole staff, a comic book staff I brought you back from when I have my comedy company about five or six years ago. And they're all very talented artists mostly from Brazil and uh, several pencilers, colorists, and Alan Oldham even helped uh, with a couple stories during the evening. And um, yeah, uh, I have uh, two guys named Leonardo, and uh, a guy named Milton, and my colorists are Hector, uh, Vinicius, and uh, an American guy is the name of his company, no, I just called Volevo soltanto aggiungere per chi appunto non l'avesse mai, per esempio ha detto una cosa molto eh, particolare, e cioè che praticamente fra gli autori c'è anche Alan Oldham, perché Alan Oldham è uno dei diciamo, GDF, che ha no? la sua etichetta, la sua tempo si chiama Generator, e che nel corso degli anni è, è stato anche assieme a lui una delle altre persone che ha rappresentato diciamo, la tecnica graficamente, ha fatto un famoso. Eh, piccolo fumetto dello scontro che c'era tra le gare esistenze della sede, di due anni della sede, il comic book, a speaker about the Swan, because it's another person that depicts Detroit Technology in the years. Sì, 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 project too, so uh, he has a lot of experience in this and it's very glad to have him uh, help with the graphic novel. Can I go up and answer? Okay, I will make just a little off topic. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. but it's all about your project uh, as well. So, um, I uh, in Rome, uh, I okay. Yes. <laughs> I actually uh, worked a lot as an artist for actors, for independent people. Uh, I worked with uh, and then Chase Cole, and and, uh, and and the funny thing is that I I was looking a lot to the Okay, like uh, yeah, because I was starting to draw. I wanted to see how the the other artists before me, okay, actually uh, uh, worked uh, on that kind of specific topics, and uh, of course, I like, saw so a lot of work. And I'm wondering, how uh, did you use to work back then when you were doing uh, labels, okay? And um, did you have like a very close relationship with the musicians? Did you work like on your own, or it was like you worked with the label, not the artist, or uh, how was it? I pretty much worked with the label and not the artist for most of my work and, uh, and it's been the same way for 30 years. I would usually listen to the music, get some ideas, do some ideas, draw some different concepts, show the client my different smaller ideas and they would pick one and then develop it further. So uh, that's been the process I've done for 30 years. And uh, for Drexia, there was something that actually went uh, different, or what was this? Well, no, no, Drexia was different. Uh, for them, it was fair. James Pinson actually came to my house and he talked over the whole ideas behind the concepts of Drexia. So it was a bit 
different than I would have to do research and uh, we would meet again. I would show them my ideas if you liked them or not, and then uh, we would go from there. Okay. And do you feel it was because of fame? Like it's, uh, it was, uh, like you could, you could feel there was a different kind of take on music from him or from Oh, well, yeah, the music was incredible. There wasn't anybody doing music like that. And, uh, you know, when I heard that from Flair, uh, shoot, it was really incredible. So it really inspired me to do, like, a unique piece of artwork at the time that I had never did before and develop characters that I had a chance to do before. So it was really wonderful. And um, uh, they were only a couple blocks over. And so James would just walk over to my house and meet me a few times. And very, uh, very exciting part of my Just as Clay noted, you know, the work that Claudia did for the Rene Majors Junior Procedures. So, um, I would like to speak about the, um, the, uh, the musical side. So, uh, Drag Cell was very important for uh, techno uh, because it probably is the most techno project ever done. We, we don't, I don't want to disrespect anyone, but uh, it, it involves so much styles, so much rhythms, so much patterns, mm -hmm. so much moods, and uh, that can be, you know, for, for the electro, can be, you know, very, a lot of things. Experimental. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, James uh, uh, ever, in general, when he was part of the group, ever think about uh, something like this? Or you were just, for what you know, for what uh, you uh, speak with them, or were just uh, really a sonic, you know, images that they have and they transmitted in, in something? Well, I think James really had sort of, I believe both of them guys are sort of like genius level, first of all. And I think James really had some really unique science fiction slash fantasy concepts going on in his brain. Because he told me about some things, and I had been watching sci-fi, reading sci-fi comic books since the 70s, and it just blew me away, the stuff he was talking. So I think um, he definitely had a vision of, 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 of what the whole thing looked like. And he was very excited to uh, tell me the different aspects of the different uh, things that were in the album, how the Michael Plexus Gerald and the equation and things like that. Yesterday we spoke about Krava, you know, the, the yeah, voice of Yes, yeah. yes, yes, that's right. So yeah, they definitely had a direction and uh, uh, I, I think it was, it was very deep and uh, yeah. yeah, okay, no, no, just, just you know, because I think I mean, it's, it's very unique, uh, two unique people, you know, and we uh, yeah. uh, cannot know. And uh, actually, the last time I saw Gerald, he said they were just being amazing and thinking stuff up. <laughs> so, that was his, that was his, uh, recollection. Yeah, it's, it's great at that, because uh, from other point of view, it was always difficult because we never know where Gerald is, where's James, where is only James and Gerald together. You know, so we, we would never know <laughs> because I know that the whole team in Detroit they never know as well. Right? It's, it's, it's an even you know secret. Um, do you think that uh, uh, yeah, the comic would be the best? Uh, obviously, yes, but. Uh, um, you think that the, the can be you, you do also like paintings. Uh, uh, like paintings has been done here in May uh, last time, and I play some music and you make it in real time. And something that's been used by uh, a lot of other artists. But in this case, in a specific case, do you think that it could be the next level of uh, to represent sounds like this? Because a comic is something that we made, you know, but probably like painting is something, you know, it's in real time. Yes, yes. yes. I would like to refer to do more live paintings, especially uh, about the theme of tracks here. And uh, I'm hoping to do that in the future to see 
support in promotion of the graphic novel and future novels that I want to do. So I think it could be uh, <coughs> important to try to have a visual uh, aspect of the music as you're uh, listening to the music and also somebody's painting. I think it's really cool and I think it will help uh, promote the whole thing. Yeah, in fact, probably yeah, in March, from March uh, uh, 2020, we need to have our eyes uh, very open minded to see what happened you know, right, right. <laughs> around the planet. It's just not enough. It was important to try to make sure that the party is set, but the more it's all around, the more it's going to be inside. Just just to see, obviously. Sapete se ci sono delle domande dal pubblico, se c'è qualcuno che ovviamente vuole intervenire anche per spezzare un po' la domanda. Abu, have you ever thought to combine the music? Like, for example, to uh, combine the CD, the music CD, to get a book in the future. Yeah. Uh, like, because we know, we obviously we are very fun about your work, but also we are very big fun about the music to the scene. And I mean, my, my secret dream is like to have like, one time like a movie, or like a movie series about that find out the music of James together, or a kind of project that combines with some graphics. Well, so. I think um, the, the most, I'm, I'm going to do some more things as the most uh, different videos and music in the background featuring the artwork and some of the concepts and some videos that perhaps posted on YouTube. But as far as a CD with the actual tracks and music, it's sort of complicated with the different uh, ownerships uh, of the right. musical rights and we don't want to get involved in any of that legal musical nonsense. So uh, probably just going to be low key and um, the most I'll do is just make some, some videos with music in the background. But I really don't want to uh, get into CDs and stuff unless it's resort or somebody like that wants to already has uh, different rights to the music or something like that. If they want to do a CD with it or something, that's cool with me, but I'm really not trying to uh, uh, get involved with the actual musical CD production. Un'altra cosa che invece è relativa alla immagini che sono entrate diciamo nel, nell'immaginario, non so se ci sono qui, ma una è stata usata proprio per il, per il per fare la pubblicità del tour per questo tour. Eh, non ci sono Comunque, there are some images that are specifically done that you just developed in the past. Yes. What, what is this? Uh, that's something that's going to be, uh, the story I'm going to be telling in the future, but it is a similar Draxian, it's called the Draxian Trident, and it's wielded by the first Draxian king and also uh, his successors. Oh, okay. and, uh, uh, this, is, this is another one that you developed from scratch. Yes, yes, yes. That's the Draxian Cruiser, but the revised version of the Draxian Cruiser that I originally gave from that dude's hilarious and more modern version of it. And, uh, and you, you told me that uh, when you decided to develop the entire world, you read, you see a lot of documentaries. Yes. So it isn't just like a... Uh, That's a screen. It's a screen. Yes. And uh, how, so you think about this as a real mechanical thing? Yes, just see, 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 see. So not, not only mechanical. Not all, no. It is not only mechanical that uh, try to look like a squid, but it's just a squid mixed with the uh, bionic uh, well, yeah, parts. It's like organic, organic technology. Okay. Uh, is involved with many different aspects of uh, technology, so organic technology is one of them. We're going to be developing these concepts in the future and telling a lot more stories. Yes. Uh, each each uh, tribe is going to develop some kind of technology. There is actually a, 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 a tribe that involved with all the directions, and uh, that's going to be part of the future stories and how they develop. Yes.
So the organic technology is going to be important, and especially the uh, GI, uh, instead of artificial intelligence, they have genetic intelligence. And it's just going to do some real deep stuff, and that's all I'm saying. Wow. <laughs> oh, we have a new Sorry, Ben. Can you tell me the video online that you checked on the level of the... How many of the artists in the US in the early 70s that had a new record of 50,000 people? And they are becoming a part of this thing. So, in effect, the rest of the anime is the future of the US. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was just, just a question about Detroit in general. I mean, in the late, 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 late 80s, early 90s, the techno movement starts. And do you think that what, what Detroit didn't have that time to start also a techno art movement? Yeah, he said it's yeah, I mean, no, no, no. <coughs> obviously in the 90s, techno exploded all around the time. But it looks like techno art, it, it became more popular just later. Yeah. So what, 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 the, what, the, what is the missing points at that time? I don't know. Yeah, I can tell you, I'm going to figure some stuff out. I mean, uh, it's been a long time. 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 Yeah, I love it. And uh, 